we begin our second and final week of our course, week number seven, Corporate Financing, chapters 16 and 17. But first, one last practice or assignment to have to do with capital budget analysis. That is assignment number four. Very similar to your assignment number three last week, but one key additional thing that you have to calculate, and that calculate the cost of capital the weighted average cost of capital that we discussed in last week's Friday video. And we'll talk more about that today's video. So this week you have another capital budget case in a spreadsheet that I have provided you. And that is due Sunday, May 22nd. Many of you are still working on assignment number three. Please get that work into me by Wednesday, May 18th. And that leads us up into our last week, next week, where we talk about chapters 18 and 19 and our final examination, which will include chapters 18 and 19. But basically it's not really a final examination. The final examination basically takes us from when the midterm left off the second half of the course, the last four weeks. So that's what the final examination will entail and more on that in my Friday video at the end of this week. That exam is due on Sunday, May 29th, and your final course grades will be posted on Thursday, June 2nd. That's uh, if you do your course evaluation, which are due to be completed June 1st. There's a link to that uh, course evaluation in assignment number four this week. And also there's a link under the course information file folder. Complete that course evaluation by June 1st, and then uh, you'll get your grade on June 2nd. If you do not post a course evaluation, which will not affect your grade whatsoever, uh, you'll just have to wait until the registrar posts your grade on uh, about five or 10 days after our course concludes on the 29th. That's my only bargaining chip to have you complete the course evaluation. But you should wanna complete the course evaluation. It's giving your input uh, it's talking, it's making sure that you uh, got some value out of this class for the money that you spent. And uh, it's very important to give us feedback, give me feedback about this course. And more on that well, a little bit later on this week. But the subject at hand tonight is uh, case assignment number four, WAC and capital budget and spreadsheet. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. In my update video this coming weekend, I will talk about chapters 16 and 17 and move forward into the final week of the course. So welcome everybody. You're almost completed with these crazy courses for the spring. And I appreciate all your fine work that all of you have done thus far. Okay, here's the work for this week. Uh, it's worth 15% of your course grade, just like assignment number three. It is due next Sunday, May 22nd. The only difference between this work and last week's work, so you can use last week's work as practice for this one, is that you have to calculate the weighted average cost of capital based on this information given here. And we're gonna do a review problem tonight to practice that again. So again, you're going to have to calculate your discount rate, the weighted average cost of capital, and then do a capital budget analysis for a 10 year project. Now, again, the only difference between this and last week's assignment number three is you have now inflation involved in this project. 3% inflation for revenue, 3% inflation for the expenses. And you have to incorporate that 3% inflation rate after year one throughout the life of the project. You did not have to worry about inflation in assignment three. This inflation factor will also alter the revenue stream of this project, and that'll influence your working capital base. And again, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. And then just like assignment number three, for some of you, if you'd like to get some extra credit points, again, 20 points of extra credit for three problems, some multiple choice questions from chapter 16 and 17, and a portfolio question having to do with chapter 17. 
You are to find if your companies in your portfolio up to this point in time have paid any dividends on, the, on their securities over the time period. The easy way of doing that is to go into Yahoo fin Finance and look under the historical prices of the stock. And then in those historical prices, you can go back through the beginning date of your portfolio and find and it'll see and show you if they've posted any dividends during that time period. So you are too hard to explain how are dividends paid and how do companies decide on dividends. Once you explain that, then tell me if your companies in your portfolio have paid any dividends up to this point in time and how much per share were those dividends. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, here is the course or the link to do the evaluation for this Business 330 class, CRN 1633. Click on this link and fill out. Now, I assume you probably wait until maybe next week uh, after you complete the examination, uh, but uh, some, of, some of us like to do it early. You've already decided on uh, your, uh, your evaluation of this course. So please go ahead and do it whenever you can. You have until June 1st. Remember, this is an anonymous evaluation of the course and the program. You have until June 1st to complete this evaluation. And I would appreciate if you do that. It's very important and helps me and the university provide a better product. So there is our assignment number four. Now let's talk about some of the key things of this assignment, how to calculate WAC and how to account for inflation in a capital budget pro project. So I refer you to our uh, Blackboard file folder and a couple things here that you should be aware of. Again, in course syllabus, schedule and information, there's another area of linking on and doing the course evaluation. And in week number seven, excuse me, in assignments and examinations, there's your assignment number four information, a PDF and a Word doc uh, format you've been you're familiar with this it's a uh, it, all the uh, to do's of the assignment and the spreadsheet that you need to download and put your information on it you can cut and paste from assignment three or from even the work we're looking at tonight the in-class review spreadsheet but you have to turn in this spreadsheet as your work file for assignment number four just like you did last week in assignment three. So there's all that information for this week's course work. And if you go to week number seven, here's a list of our learning assignments of this week, our lecture video posted tonight on May 16th, the chapter reading, a note in the chapter reading for chapters 16 and 17, only a couple of sections in those chapters. 16, one and two, 17, one, two and three are the sections you need to be reading for out of those chapters. We're gonna be reviewing an in-class spreadsheet in just a minute. And here's your graded assignment this week, which we just went over assignment number four. So let's go to week number seven and bring up this review file right here. In-class review spreadsheet, week seven, spring 2022 capital budget analysis template. Again, another template by which you can do your assignment work as, a, as from uh, or incorporate that work into your assignment number four. So let's take a look at that spreadsheet right now. Okay, this is the week seven uh, review spreadsheet and it's broken into two tabs. First of all, a calculation of the weighted average cost of capital, which we did that also last week in week six and in our weekend update video. And then another example of putting together a capital budget analysis. And in this case, we now add inflation to the calculation and we'll go over that in just a minute. First of all, the WAC. Remember we talked about the WAC last week to determine you need two things. You need the capital structure percentages of debt and equity in the company. And then you need the information for the cost of debt after taxes and the market returns and information for and the beta and risk of the company to determine the cost of equity 
through the capital asset pricing model. So let's do that right here for this one because you have to do it this week in assignment number four. It's not given to you like it was in assignment number three. So first of all, we have a interest rate on debt of 9%, a tax rate of 75%. So our cost of debt after taxes is equal to the 9% interest rate on our debt times one minus the tax rate of the company 0.25%. In other words, you get a tax break of 25% on that interest rate. And the answer is 6.75%, the after tax cost of debt, 9% less the tax rate, the tax deduction you get on, uh, in, your, in your calculation. Now, if our, if our debt position is 60%, we take that 6.75%, of that is weighted by the debt position in the company. So we get a weighted average after tax cost of debt of 4.05%. Then we have our cost of equity. What is the expected return of a company over, over in the coming year based on market rates and the risk of the company in the market? Well, the risk-free rate here is 2%. The market rate of return is 10. And the company's beta is 1.35. So our cost of equity per the capital asset pricing model is the 2% risk-free rate plus the market premium, which is the risk-free rate, the market return minus the risk-free rate, 10% minus two, times the beta of the company, 1.35. So we put that into a formula, 0 0.02 plus determining the market premium of 0 0.1 minus 0 0.02 and multiplying that times the beta of the company, 1.35. and we get 12.8%. 2% plus 8% times 1.35 is 12.80%, all right? We take that 12.8% and weight it by the equity position of the company, 40%, we get 5.12%. We now have calculated the weighted average cost of capital this company's cost of capital today, based on market information relative to the market and the risk of the company and the capital structure weight of how the assets are funded by debt and equity. And we get 9.17%. This 9.17% will now be our project WAC or our discount rate in the calculation we're about ready to do for this capital budget analysis. So again, there's a perfect, again, practice, just like last week, a template that we did, a perfect practice to determine the cost of capital for a company. And now we use that as our discount rate. So here's the example here. Again, your assignment four is a little bit different. It goes out 10 years. This goes out four years. But it's basically the same premise. They're investing 340000 today in year zero with a salvage value of $30,000, a depreciation of $85,000 a year over the four years, and uh, the following information. So let's fill this in. First of all, I have already put in the investment of 340,000. And now remember our depreciable life is four years. So we're now we're going to depreciate that $85,000 a year. Over four years, there it is right there. Notice I have preset formulas, so it's doing all these calculations for me right off the bat. Our revenue is going to be in the first year, 2000 units times the selling price of $1,200, quite hefty, $1,200. And notice what my formulas have automatically done. Something a little bit different than assignment number three. I am now inflating 
sales after year one by the 3% rate. So basically you can see it in this cell. It's taking year one and multiplying it times 1.03. That's a 3% increase of the sales in revenue over the course of the second year. And then it increases by 3% again in the third year and 3% again in the fourth year. So again, we're now incorporating inflation into our revenue, which is, makes sense. Prices are gonna go up over the course of these, the life of this project. And in, there's the calculation for an inflation rate of 3%. We'll do the same thing for variable cost. Variable cost is the number of units we produce each year, 2000, times the variable cost per unit, which is $900. There it is right there. And again, my preset formulas increase that also by the inflation rate of 3% every year for those variable costs expenses. Fixed costs is, and for this project, is $400,000. There it is right there. And also that inflates by 3% every year. Now, some students might say, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Hassey, time out. Why is fixed costs being inflated? It's fixed. The, it's fixed in relationship to the output. If we sell and produce 2,000 units, or if we sell and produce 10 units, it's still going to be $400,000. It's fixed relative to output and sales. But fixed costs, which might be insurance, it might be rent, whatever, they inflate as well, and in this case, they inflate by 3%, and we also have to incorporate that. Notice we do not inflate depreciation. That goes against all accounting rules. So there's the depreciation that we've already put in, 85,000. Here's our earnings before taxes, which is revenue minus expenses. We take our tax rate here is 25%. We take 25% our, take out of that, and here's our net accounting income for this project of four years, we're making an accounting profit over the four years of $372,000. Now we have to fill in the after net income things. Now in this case, we have a salvage value, 30,000. So we're gonna to have to incorporate the salvage money in year four at the end of the life, but also since we fully depreciated it, we're going to have to take out the tax from that salvage value and we get $22,500. In other words, we've fully depreciated 340,000 investment. Then in year four, we're going to get a scrap or salvage value of disposal of that equipment for $30,000. That's considered a capital gain. We have to pay a 25% tax. The net is we get a gain of cash flow of $22,500. There's the calculation there. Then we add back in depreciation into our cash flow because depreciation is a non cash expense. So we add it back in. There it is right there. And now notice what we're doing with working capital. Working capital in this case is going to be different in every year because. Not like when in assignment number three, it was the exact same, the full years. So 10% or 11% of that revenue stays the same. But now we have, we have changing revenue every year, that's going to alter the working capital calculation. And notice what I do. In year zero, I take the 11% working capital as a percent of the first year's revenue, 11% of $2.4 million, is a additional cash deduction of 264,000. Then look what I do in year two. I take, excuse me, in year one for working capital, I take the year two sales and I subtract the year one sales from it. I take 2.472 minus 2.4, which is roughly $72,000 and I multiply that times negative 11% and I get $7,920. So notice at the end of year one, I've accumulated 
$271,920 of working capital cash negative flow, which happens to be that total 11% of the following year's revenue. Same thing holds true in year two. You take the delta between year three and year two revenue times 11%. The same thing in year three, you take the delta between year four and year three. There it is right there. And then now we add all that back in in year four because the project is over. There's no sales revenue in year five. So all I do is take 11% of 262, 262545. I get $288,480 positive cash flow and if you notice this is important we talked about this last week the entire amount of the working capital now nets to zero negative cash flow negative negative and then when the project's over all that cash flow comes back as positive cash flow in the final year of the project so i have now determined my cash flow on an investment of $340,000 in the asset and an investment in year zero of $264,000 in working capital, I'm spending today $604,000 generating over the course of four years, $999,044 of discounted ca of, of cash flow. Now I'm going to take those four years and discount it back at my cost of capital that I calculated in the very first part of this problem, 9.17%. Formula, function, financial, net present value. My rate is what I calculated, 9.17%. And my values are year one through year four of total cash flow. Year one through year four of total cash flow, I get $771,707 of discounted cash flow. I compare that to my net outlay in year zero. I have a positive net present value of $167,707. Looks pretty good. That's in dollars. What is my internal rate of return? I now calculate that internal rate, rate of return using the IRR function under financial to determine the interest rate of return. And all it is is taking the values of year zero through year four of cash flow and determining 19.08% return on this investment over four years, which is a good sign. And now we know why we have positive NPV because it's almost 10, it is almost 10% higher than our cost of capital. We're making 10% more return than our cost. Our profitability index is the ratio of the relationship of the discounted cash flow divided by the investment. That ratio is 1.28 greater than one. And our payback in years is taking a look at we how long does it take us to pay back the 604,000? Well, after year one, we have 440,670 paid back. At the end of year two, we have $273,078 paid back. At the end of year three, we have $101,095 still to pay back. And then if we take that 101,095 as a percentage of the year four cash flow, we get 0 0.20, one, two, three point two years to pay it back. One, two, three, and then 20% of year four to pay back the $604,000. So in dollars, we're making a net present value of 167,707. In a return percentage, it's 19.08%. In a profitability index, it's 1.28.
And in payback, it's a little bit over three years, 3.2 years to pay back the investment. In assignment number four, this is exactly what you're going to do for the information given to you in assignment four. You are to calculate the WAC and then put together the discounted and estimated of a cash flow and the returns. And then one last thing. You are, remember in assignment number three, you were asked to just say go or no go. In assignment number four, I'm going to ask you to be a little bit more elaborate. Tell me why you would approve this project and give specific reasons why that. Probably just type in a couple sentences or a paragraph on your spreadsheet explaining would you approve or not approve based on your analysis of assignment number four. So no no go or go, an actual paragraph or a couple sentences telling me what you would recommend for this project. And that's the assignment number four template. Naturally, you're going to go out a little bit longer, but this gives you an idea how to handle and calculate the WAC and how to handle inflation for revenue and your two main expenses, variable and fixed costs. Put that together. That's assignment number four for this week. And I will now post this template back to week number seven. So you have that as a guide in your studies this week. So in summation, I will, in our, in our weekend update or Friday update video, if I get it done by Friday, lately it's been on Saturday. When I get, uh, when I up, will update and review assignment number three, once I have all the assignment number three files posted, I'll post the grades and review it in our weekend video. I will also review the chapter 16 and 17 in that video, and then talk about the final examination and get you prepped for the last week of our class in our update video this coming weekend. Again, I will be available Wednesday evening at six o'clock via our Zoom link if any of you need to chat with me. Not too many people have uh, needed to do that lately. I feel kind of lonely, but that's all right. But you know I'll be there Wednesday evening. And also if you have any other questions at other times, please feel to ask them. We're off and running the second to last week. We have another assignment. We have the postings of our course evaluations and we're beginning to wrap up this Business Finance 330 class for this spring. All right, everybody, until I see you either on Wednesday in our student hours or in our update video at the end of this week, have a great week, stay healthy, adios.